One of my gripes with D&D is how marshals are pretty relegated to very specific tasks. It's basically single target damage across the board. You have tanking, sure, but overall, the concept is single target damage, barbarians, single target damage, fighters, single target damage, paladins, single target damage, rangers, single target damage, so on and so forth. I think monks are actually the one exception to this. They can get some pretty unique play styles, which is one of the cool things about monks. I know everyone likes to crap on monks, but hey, they have that going for them. But what I wanted to do with this build is to take a full marshal and make it really, really unique with our build decisions. And I think I accomplished that with this build. This is the battlefield commander. And without further ado, let's jump into the build. In order to pull this off, I went Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin is fantastic for this build because it has built-in support capabilities. You can give the help action as a bonus action and give extra benefits along with that help action. On top of that, they give us dark vision and they give us bonuses to saving throws primarily. Their ability to add plus three to an attack, an ability check, or a saving throw is usually gonna be used for saving throws, but also has some extra synergy for offense. The leveling for this build is I'm gonna be going into five Battlemaster Fighter, three into Thief Rogue, and then I'll be going the rest of the levels back into Battlemaster fighter. As for our stats, dexterity is our primary, constitution is our secondary, and wisdom is our tertiary. My concept for this character is that it is a battlefield tactician. They have led mercenary groups in the past, and they are now leading this party. And they lead them by controlling the battlefield, helping with the team's maneuverability, and setting up situations to our advantage. Now, the playstyle for this character is someone who stands in the back line. I actually want to be an archer, so we're going to take the archery fighting style. The reason for this is we can have a whole view of the battlefield, and we can make sure we can get to teammates and be positioned where we need to and still affect our damage output. You cannot be a fighter rogue multi-class without having single target damage output and we have it, we just want to do a bunch of other stuff as well. The first primary way we do this is the maneuvering attack maneuver. This allows us to attack someone, do some extra damage, and then allow our teammates to move half their movement as a reaction without taking opportunity attacks. This is widely applicable to many situations. Is our barbarian not going to get to enemies next turn because they don't have enough movement speed? But if we use maneuvering attack, they might be able to. Too. Awesome application. Probably coming up more often is maybe our support is being pressured. Now we can maneuvering attack, get them away from the enemies, and allow them more space to move about and do their job. Our job is to read each situation and create as many opportunities for our party as possible. Going along with this theme, the second maneuver I'm taking a look at is Commander Strike. Now Commander Strike won't be used for every single party. Some parties are not going to have someone who can deal a ton of damage with one attack. Let's say you have a rogue in your party. Now you can be setting them up to get these sneak attacks and you're just giving up one of your attacks, which is going to be less effective than theirs. Also, it's awesome in theme. A great all-around maneuver to have is Menacing Attack. Menacing Attack allows us to tank for our teams from far away. So we attack an enemy, they have to make a save. If they fell it, they are now feared. If they're feared, they're going to have disadvantage on all attacks and we can control their movement. So we can support our team from afar. Others I might consider because they're powerful, fun, or because they go in theme include Trip Attack, Disarming Strike, Rally, Commanding Presence, and Tactical Assessment. As for our ASIs, it is a priority to maximize dexterity as soon as possible. So if we have an odd amount, I'm going to take Piercer. It's going to increase our damage by a bit. And if not, I'm just going to take a flat increase to dexterity. After we hit fifth level and we get our multi attack, we're going to go into Rogue now. Now we get cunning action by going into Rogue and it's really great. It allows us to disengage or move more, but honestly, we don't want to be using it every turn. That's because we have other stuff to do with our bonus action. Commander Strike is a good example of this or our Hobgoblin's help action as a bonus action. This is more of the stuff we want to be doing with our bonus action, but if we need to disengage, we now can. But the number one thing we want to be doing with our bonus action actually comes from becoming a thief, our fast hands feature. Fast hands is by far my favorite rogue feature, period. It is so amazing and it has so much application and it allows you to do so many unique things for a marshal. So that's why we took it here. It can increase our damage output because we can throw vials of acid as a bonus action or alchemist fire and light someone on fire. And if they want to turn that fire off, they now have to use an action to do it. So we might even interrupt up their action economy. It allows us to focus on battlefield control with things like the hunter's trap, caltrops, or ball bearings. So now we can create areas of denial. It allows us to support our teammates with healers kits. It allows us to create unique opportunities where we can use it to throw tables to create cover or to use our climbers kit to attach to the side of walls. It just opens up a massive amount of application and utility. It's mind boggling. You can crowbar doors. You can pick locks. You can pickpocket wizards and take their spellcasting focuses. There's so many things you can do 
with fast hands and it really makes us stop feeling like just a one trick pony just do a lot of damage to one creature derp and allows us to actually think about the battlefield and actually think about our team's positioning we can maneuver teammates create caltrops in between them and the enemy there's so many things we can do here now right after this level of rogue we're actually going to be jumping back into fighter for the rest and our first level we go back into fighter gives us an asi and i want to pick up the healer feat this is going to allow us to heal our teammates with our healer's kit this healing can be done once a day but more importantly it allows us to pick up allies as a bonus action and as an archer we can run to our allies pick them up as a bonus action and still be doing damage we are both a single target damage dealing beast just by nature of being a fighter as well as being a team support battlefield controller and just overall utility i really love how it all comes together now a note to make here is that we have the archery fighting style we have steady aim from rogue and we have the hobgoblin's ability to give us plus three to our attack rolls we're a decent sharpshooter not the best sharpshooter ever but we can take sharpshooter pretty comfortably to increase our single target damage output it's not my priority but around level 10 i'm gonna probably start thinking about that as a potential option for this build now that's the core of the build but let's talk about a couple details we are a dexterity constitution wisdom build so naturally we're already affecting all of our saves in the perfect spots we have the perfect save setup then we add hobgoblins increase to our saves indomitable from being a fighter and our saves actually become really fantastic by nature of being a fighter we're gonna have naturally solid ac by nature of being a rogue we're gonna have disengage so our defense all comes together quite nicely we have decent damage output and then martial support throughout so overall it's an incredibly well-rounded build who can work in many different ranges a consideration you can make you can just go straight fighter but another consideration to make is just to go to 11 fighter make sure we get the extra extra attack and then go back into rogue to get more sneak attack damage that is definitely an option for you and it also increases the amount of utility you're going to have so that's something i would consider what i would love to hear from you guys is what are the most unique martial play styles you can think of let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in showing support to the channel as well as getting some awesome benefits along the way consider checking out our patreon but with that my friends i hope you have yourselves an incredible day i'll catch you on the next one see you then